folks, it's good to be back with you, and I'd like to start today by doing the beginnings of a statics problem. Now, I'm going to do the statics problem in real detail. It's probably going to take two videos, because one video would be too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to lay the problem out, uh, do the free body diagram, do the partial solution, and in the next video I'll complete the solution. So there's going to be two videos in the series, okay? So let's get going. What we've got now is going to be a really simple three bar truss. Okay, it's the one I used in a previous video for an example. I've added some more information to it. So here's what it looks like. All right, got, oops, a thousand newtons. And I've got it pinned right there, okay? So remember, these, these hash mark lines indicate that whatever's over here is, is massive and rigid. Think of it as like a giant concrete wall. And down here is massive and rigid, like a giant concrete floor. Whatever's going on here and here, it's not moving, right? This right here is a pin. That's a pin. And that's a pin right there. And what pins mean is that, uh, well, here, I'll do it this way. When bars come together at a pin, they can flex as they want to, okay? There's no internal moment right there, all right? So that's what a pin means. It's the opposite of, like, a welded joint where you really can have moments at the corner, all right? So I need some dimensions here, and I'll make it one meter there. And I'll make these both 45 degrees. All right, so it's going to have to be 90 degrees there. And um, we're given this, all right, one of the things I want to, want to remind you about is there's something called GFSA, and it's a format for solving problems. I'm going to write given, write all the givens, everything that the problem statement includes, everything we know about the problem before we start. Then I'm going to write find, all right, GF, find. What is it we're trying to find? Well, I'm going to try and find the forces in the bars. Okay, now these are going to be internal forces. These are the forces that the bars actually feel. And so given find GFS the solution. Okay, we're going to do all the calculations here. And the A part is answer. So GFSA, given find solution answer. The answer part is going to be real short. I'll write out the word answer, put the answers down, and draw a box around them. All right. So I want to find the forces in the bar. So if I'm going to do this, I've got to do a little bookkeeping up front. I need to give numbers to the grid points and numbers to the uh, bars themselves. So the grid points or joints here, I'm going to call that 1, I'm going to call that 2, and I'm going to call that 3. I hope that's big enough to see on the video. So 1, 2, 3, and the circles around it indicate those are joints, right? They where things come together. I also have to give numbers to the bars themselves. I don't want to make sure I did this right with um, the sheet I did here. So there's one, two, and three. And the bar underneath there means those, are, those correspond to bars. So circles are numbers that correspond to joints, and underlines are numbers that correspond to bars. Now this is just some, the way I'm doing it. Your teacher may have a different format or a different sort of uh, system they want to use. By all means, do what your teacher wants you to do. That teacher's grading you, I'm not, okay? But this is just sort of bookkeeping. This part can change without affecting the solution any. So, when I want to do a solution here, all right, the very first thing I want to do in almost any statics problem and almost any uh, strength of materials problem is I want to draw a free body diagram. If you find yourself progressing through a solution and you aren't doing a free body diagram, you should be asking yourself, Self, why, am I, why is there no free body diagram here? You'd better have a pretty good reason, okay? There are a few, but not many. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw the entire structure to start with, okay? And I'm going to apply only the, 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 the loads around the edge. I'm going to apply this external load and then the reaction forces here and here. Now, the reaction forces are the forces between my support, this pin here and that roller there, and the structure itself, okay? Now, in statics, the big idea in statics is the structure's rigid, okay? It doesn't deform. In mathematical terms, that means its uh, elastic modulus is infinite, all right? Real structures, of course, deform, but when you take that deformation into account, the mathematics gets more complicated. No, it's not impossible, it's just more complicated. And for a, a structure like a truss with a whole lot of bars in it, it makes the math a lot more tractable if you just assume everything is rigid. And you can get surprisingly close to the right answer by doing that. 
Look at any trust structure that was built before eh, about 1970, I imagine, and the chances are very good that that structure was designed at least in part with statics. So there's lots of bridges in the U.S., there's lots of bridges around the world, I don't know, radio towers, all kinds of things, where the structure, this large, complicated trust structure, was designed largely using statics. It works fine. We wouldn't be teaching it to you if it didn't work. Okay, so getting back to it, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw the free body diagram. So step one in the solution is draw FBD for free body diagram. So what I'm going to have here is I've got the external force there, and that's a thousand newtons. Okay, now, I don't know what the forces are on these other joints, so I'm going to just assume some directions. And in order to do that, I need a coordinate system. Before you get very far, draw your coordinate system. Okay? So there you go. This is going to be what I'm going to consider the positive sign convention. Positive x is that way, positive y is that way. I want to use a right-hand coordinate system, so when I go x into y, that way I get z out this direction, and my moment is positive that way. All right, so that's my sign convention I'm going to use most of the time. Um, I'll change it if there's a real good reason to change it. Here, there's not. So, got that. Now, because of this roller here, there can only be forces in the vertical direction. Those little wheels there are assumed to be frictionless. So that point can move back and forth, left and right, in the x direction, however it wants to, without, any, without uh, there being any uh, reaction force. So there's only a force in the, vertical, or in, in the vertical direction there. And I'm going to put one there and one there. Okay? So I've got all, there, there can be two forces at that point because it's a pin. There can only be one there because it's a roller. Right? So one, two, three. Okay, I've got my three forces. Well, let's label them. That's grid point one, and that's in the y direction. So I'll call it F1, Y. This one's in the point one, it's in the F direction, or X direction, so F1, X. And right here, got, there is no F2, X because of the roller. So here's F2, Y. I'm going to make that look a little bit like a 1 so it doesn't look like I'm trying to write a word there. So there you go. Now again, your instructor may have some different convention they want to use. By all means, you do what your instructor tells you, not what I tell you, because I'm not giving you a grade, your instructor is. So I'm going to use that. If you don't know what else to do, use this. It's, it's clear, it's unambiguous, this will work. All right, so I've got a free body diagram. Now what? Well. The other big idea of statics, apart from the fact that the structure is rigid, is that the structure is not moving. Okay? What does not moving mean? Well, it means that the sum of the forces and the sum of the moments have to be zero. If they're not, the structure is accelerating. Well, there's lots of structures that accelerate. As I'm talking about this right now, there's a spacecraft called uh, Falcon 9, I think, by SpaceX that's coming back from the space station. Well, it's moving. It's going to accelerate. And there must be some... Ex you know, the net forces on it can't be zero or it wouldn't be accelerating. Well, in this case, in statics, that's just it. It's statics, not moving. So statics means that some of the forces in the x direction has to be zero. Some of the forces in the y direction have to be zero. And the sum of the moments have to be zero. All right? This is what statics means mathematically. Okay, now these get called different things. Equations of equilibrium is what I was always uh, taught to call them. So I guess I'll call them that. Okay, statics means all that. These are called equations of, of equilibrium. Just kind of a equations of equilibrium. Equilibrium means everything's in balance, okay? The structure's not moving. All the forces are in balance. All the moments are in balance. Now, why are there only three of them? Well, there's three of them because this is a planar structure. It doesn't come out of the board in the, in the third dimension. If it did, there would be three translations and three rotations. Well, in a planar structure, there's only two directions it can move, and there's only one way it can rotate. All right? it, it, is, it can't rotate this way out of the board. I haven't given it that degree of freedom. So for what we're doing here, we're going to do three degrees of freedom, three possible uh, kinds of motion this thing can have. Um, and that's pretty typical. As the problems get more and more complicated, we tend to go to computer solutions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start writing out these equations. And I look, I'm a 10 or 950 right now into the video. So uh, I'm going to write out the equations of equilibrium, and then I'm going to stop, all right? 
next video I'll solve them and I'll show you how to, how to go one step further and solve for the uh, forces in the bars themselves. So let's just do this one at a time. Some of the forces in the x direction equal zero. Well, is there any force in the x direction there? No. Is there any force in the x direction there? No. There's one there. Okay. So let's just write that out. F one x equals zero. Well, we kind of knew that anyway. There's no horizontal force anywhere else, so there probably isn't one there either. But you know, it's good to go through the math. It certainly isn't going to hurt to do whatever the math says and just verify your intuition. Okay. All right, so some of the forces in the y direction equal zero. This is going to get a little more interesting. There's more going on here. So I've got ex external force there being applied, and I've got some reaction forces. So let's just do what the math says to do. So that's minus 1,000 newtons, okay, because that's, that's in the negative y direction, plus F2y plus F1y. Okay, that has to equal zero. All right, we know that. Sum of the moments has to equal zero. Well, moments about what? You have to calculate moments about some uh, point in order to get uh, moment arms. Well, I can pick any point I want. You know, if I pick, uh, let's say I pick that point right there, well, the moment arm for F1Y goes to zero, so I'll just do it that way. So the moments around, let's see, that's point one, all right? That's going to equal zero. So because that's one meter and this is 45 degrees, if you do the math, that turns out to be 500 millimeters between there and, and that point right there. All right, bad drafting, but there you go. So let's see. F2y times a half a meter, okay, is going to rotate that way. That's positive, all right? So let's see, 0 0.5 meters times F2y, okay, that is going to try to rotate clockwise. This was counterclockwise, so the, the 1,000 Newton force is going to be uh, clockwise, and that's going to be against my positive sign convention, so that's going to be minus, minus 1 meter times 1,000 Newtons, and that has to equal zero. So there we go. We've got three things we don't know here. We don't know F1, well, we don't know F1y, we don't know F2y, okay, that equation is off the, off the uh, table now. So I've got two things I don't know and two equations to work with. Sounds like it ought to work. All right, I'm going to stop there because I'm at about oh, 12, 13 minutes here. And I'm going to continue in the next video.